again, friends. We are back to the teletype transmitter and reperf control panel project. Uh, this is part two. Please go visit part one if you haven't seen it already to give a little background on the project. And uh, we're now at the stage where uh, we are trying. We're going to try to figure out how to wire this all up and uh, and get started. So the first thing I had to do was figure out how I'm going to wire all of this together. And in order to do that, I really had to understand the wiring that existed in the original, uh, on the original uh, backplane, the original uh, terminal strips of the ASR. There are a lot of them. Uh, there's something like, uh, let's see, uh, 40, I think there's, there's 80 or six, rather 60 uh, positions in the terminal block. And you'll see in a little while that I'm going to be adding another 10 more. Okay, so um, this is supposed to show a connection between, for example, position 15 and position 13. Uh, black indicates that it's connected. Blue indicates that it's skipped over. So in this case, for example, um, uh, you've got 10 connected to 11, uh, 9 connected to 8, and 8 connected to 5, but 5 and I'm sorry, but 6 and 7 are uh, skipped over. All right, what's really important, I can go through all this, but I don't think it'll, it'll be that useful. The most important thing I, I want to point out are these two blue lines here and here. This take the loop from various components here that are getting looped, for example, a keyboard and the page printer, etc., and they bring the loop out to here. And you'll see, let's take a look at the bottom line. So one part of the loop goes to this, which is the internal reperforator. Uh, that's the one that uh, sits on top of the keyboard. Uh, and then the output, then the, the, that continues, so it goes from 133 here to the re internal reperf. Then from the other wire of the internal reperf, it goes to connection 132. You'll see that it, there's no connection here because it's blue, but that 130, that uh, internal reperforator loop now goes to the, uh, term, uh, the transmitter distributor loop. That goes out to the transmitter distributor, comes back in, and then finally that comes into 131, which goes back to, uh, completes the loop here. So between 10 and 6, I'll just point out these two, between these two areas, that's the that's part of the loop. That's the open loop that runs over to this terminal strip. Uh, and so again, the term the loop goes uh, from from here, reperforator out, reperforator in, TD out, TD in, and then back here across the loop. So that this is the way that it's uh, it's been wired. Call it not really from the factory, but from where I got it. Now let's take a look at the modifications uh, we're going to have to make to make our uh, external reperf integrated and uh, transmitter uh, key, uh, transmitter uh, switch and the in new internal mark hold loop. All right, so this is basically the same thing, but I've added now, if I scroll over, I've added uh, another 10 position terminal block. This is courtesy of uh, Tom WB2. B2 TTY. Uh, and um, what we've done now is we've extended the loop into this block here. And we did that in the following way. Again, we're going to follow these, these two blue uh, lines because that's where the loop comes in here. Same as the old one, it goes first to the internal reperforator. But now instead of going out here to close the loop, or it goes to here, 130. Remember, these see in the color, these are the same. These are both the uh, internal reperforator. It's nothing connected here except it goes to the, now the external reperf traffic and then back in and then closes the loop here to 132. 132 then goes to the uh, tr TD, the transmitter distributor, then the other transmitter distributor here and out it goes. So we've extended the loop to include this essentially, which is the external reperforator traffic loop. Um, you'll remember, let's see if I can bring it up here. You'll, you'll remember that there are two loops 
that we are working with. One is the main traffic loop, which is the, the, the actual uh, communication traffic. And the other is just a mark hold loop uh, to keep it uh, from running open. So what we've done here is uh, we've added this into the loop. Now, all of these, all six of these connections go to our switch. Uh, and so that's here. It goes to our switch. The switch, is, here's one, two, three, four, five, six connections. This is the common. This is the sort of the output that goes to the reperf itself. And from the output, you're selecting one of these two loops. So let's take a look what we have. So uh, this is going out, as you can see here. This is uh, from the switch. Go, uh, the common or going out to the external reperf. The external reperf jack will connect here. Goes uh, it goes through here. This one goes through here, and so you're, these two are being we're we're getting the loop from either this, which is the external loop, or this, which is an internal mark hold loop. If you can see these come through here, these come through here. So essentially. The, we're going to have the power supply feed these two, which is just the mark hold power supply. And now this is going to be one of the two loops. This is the other of the two loops, which is, of course, uh, the main loop. And they were all, and, and one of these, the two of these four will get switched to this, these two, which will then go out to the reperf jack uh, itself. Okay. And uh, the other thing to mention is. Not only are we going to install this 10 position barrier strip on the rear uh, with, along with the others, but we're going to install a, this four position barrier strip or terminal strip uh, behind the new control panel. And these will go to the switch, red and black, white and brown. This is for the first transmitter. This is the second transmitter. And then these, uh, yeah, well, this goes to the switches and then this goes to the actual transmitter. I hope that uh, explains some of it. Let's take a look at the actual wiring and see how it all looks. So here is the transmitter switch and um, the little four circuit barrier strip that will get mounted, uh, let's see here, uh, behind here with these four screws, four holes. And uh, let's go over it. So what we did, th th this, um, this switch has six sections. Uh, in this particular switch, they're pretty identical. So there's one section here, second section here, a third section here. I'm sorry, did I say six six sessions? Uh, se se uh, sections, four, four sections. One, two, three, four. Four sections. And uh, each section has three contacts. I hope you can see them. One, two, three. I'll try that again, see if I can get it to focus. One, two, three. The middle is common. This is normally opened, and this is normally closed. And we have that on all four sections. So essentially, this is the normally open, uh, and so this will be transmitter one. When you flip the switch, these will close. And for tran to key transmitter two, when you flip the switch in the other direction, these will close. Now, the only other thing I had to add here is, on, this, on the other two sections of this, uh, what I did is I ran them in parallel. Two of two, I, I ran the normally open sections in parallel. You can see a green, white, and a green, white here. And then the, the two of them parallel that take off into this, uh, this longer blue wire here. Why did I do this? Because when you're tra when you're in transmit mode, you want your uh, your uh, current loop from the terminal unit, like in this case of my ST6. You want it to be constantly on when you're transmitting, because you want the keyboard to be interrupting. You want the keyboard to interrupt the uh, the the current loop for the purposes of keying the transmitter. Uh, you know the two FSK tones. And so what you want, the, the ST6 has a special input that is mark hold and that you trigger that, you short it, when you are transmitting to make sure that it doesn't, it doesn't uh, start opening and closing if it has any 
audio on the receive line, right? You don't care about any audio on the receive line because you're transmitting right now. So this will force, uh, whichever one I pick, transmitter one or transmitter two, that's why they're in parallel, either one selected will short these two blue wires and cause the ST6 to stay in mark hold mode while you're transmitting. Um, and um, yeah, so that's, that's how this works. This is all mounted. We can, let's, we can mount this up next. So here's the panel uh, wired up, um, and I'll just go over it again. So this is this is the um, the transmitter selector switch. I'll show the front of this soon, and uh, we've got these four wires to the terminal strip. The, ter the, the the transmitters will connect to the terminal strip. So I'll run a wire, run a pair of wires uh, to these two for my Harris transmitter, and a pair of wires to these two from my TMC transmitter or anything else, central electronics or anything else I want to run uh, Rideon. And then again, this is the blue line that will trigger the ST6 to stay in mark hold while I'm transmitting on either transmitter. And then this I showed in my last video. I hope you saw part one. If you haven't, please check it out. Uh, this is what uh, changes, selects the loop, one of two loops, mark hold or regular traffic loop. And it closes or normal normals normalings normals uh, the main loop when I'm not using it. And let's take a look at the business end of this. And I hope you'll be as pleased with the result as I am. Uh, but this is what it looks like. And so this will select transmitter one, transmitter two, and this will be re the uh, external reperforator off, essentially mark hold. And we'll turn the reperforator on to the main loop, and it'll start uh, printing copy or, or punching punching copy from the loop. Uh, it also has this little momentary down, but I, I, I haven't figured out if there's anything useful to do with that, so I'm just going to ignore it. But this will turn the re reperf on, reperf off, transmitter one, receive, transmitter two, receive. So let's get this mounted in the uh, ASR and see how it looks. Well, folks, there it is the new control panel, all ready to go, all installed. And uh, let's just take a little zoom out a little so you can see the overall machine. Machine still needs to be put back together. There's missing some body parts. Uh, and here is the new control panel. And again, just as I showed before, this will turn transmitter one on, receive transmitter two. And this will turn this external reperf on and when off, uh, the reperf will be held in, mark, in a mark hold position. Uh, and let's take a look uh, at the inside here. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, so inside, you can see the panel um, the, uh, with the switches. So if we open up the top and we can see what we've got here. Um, this is exactly what uh, we showed on the bench earlier. And uh, these wires, the, the, I've, I've made them just, you know, awfully long uh, to make sure. Uh, these will get routed and, event, and these will all go to this new barrier strip, the one that I mentioned, the 10 position, 10 circuit, uh, that's on its way from uh, Tom WB2 TTY. And so what will happen is I will make a nice bundle of these wires uh, and put them all on, uh, hook them into the barrier strip that'll go here. And then the final uh, part will be the, the jack for the reperf plugged in over here. We're going to wait until the new barrier strip arrives, terminal strip, and finish wiring it up and, and test it. All right, so uh, getting back to the diagram, uh, you can see that we've mostly been focused in this area here, uh, which is the switching part, the part that gets mounted on the panel. Uh, but now it's time to concentrate on the jacking part, which is the, the place where the reperf is going to connect to. Originally, the, this diagram had only one jack, because after all, we have only one reperforator. Uh, but when I designed the plate, it was clear that we had room for a second jack, and I thought it would be a good idea uh, just to use that second jack uh, for whatever might come up in the future. 
And so you can see in this updated diagram that I now have two jacks and they're connected in series uh, and the normaling function is included in both. So if either one or both have no plug inserted, the, the, the loop will be continuous. So to go from the schematic to a functioning wiring diagram, uh, I'm pulling up here the manufacturer spec sheet on the uh, Nutric uh, uh, device, the plug, a uh, jack. And what you'll see is it has both a quarter inch tip ring sleeve plus tip normal, ring normal, and sleeve normal contacts. Uh, and it also supports XLR on the bottom. You can see that we're not going to use the XLR portion at all for this. Uh, here I just blew up the, the jack itself, the part that we're going to be looking at without the, uh, without the XLR. Here you can see how it's going to get wired up. Uh, I've got the two normal, normaling connectors uh, connected and then uh, I take off this, uh, from, this, from the sleeve and the tip. Uh, there is another way to design this, uh, but I chose not to take that approach because it would require uh, it would take uh, two wires to uh, go into the same solder cup, and that would have been very difficult to do. And here is the diagram uh, using two of these jacks connected in series, each one with the normaling function installed. So let's move on. And this is the panel designed to allow uh, the reperf to have a place to plug in, and uh, it will plug in. Uh, and then connect, of course, to the switch to, to decide which, which loop to connect it to. And um, I showed the diagram previously, but you'll see these, these black loops. Yeah, this one's a little too long. These black loops connect the two normaling uh, contacts here and here. And then there's uh, one loop of green wire that goes from the tip of one to the sleeve of the other. And then from the sleeve here goes out and from the tip here goes out. That way they're in series, uh, positive to negative or tip to, tip to sleeve. And um, all of this will get mounted right in here and let me show that next. And here it is installed. Everything fits beautifully, which means the measurements I took uh, and put into the CAD drawing were correct. And what you'll see now is um, the reperforator will go down underneath the ASR, up through that hole, up through this hole, and here we have the plug for the reperforator, and we'll plug in, and gives me space for another one. In fact, I could even, I could really um, put my KSR into that if I wanted to, and also control it in the same way, meaning... Uh, turn it on and off and uh, with a closed loop or the traffic loop. So uh, I just I did two for that option. Now the only thing that remains is I've got to run the, the uh, two green wires out into here and then uh, everything gets wired up into this final uh, 10 position barrier strip. Okay, so in the mail has arrived a beautiful little perfect uh, barrier strip. And uh, we are going to mount this, let's see if I could do this one-handed, right in this spot here. Move the wires out of the way. I'm going to mount it right down here. And uh, that'll give us a nice place to connect all of these wires up. So let's, let's do that.
uh, I have wired everything up here. Uh, I uh, crimped on these and I've shortened these cables. Uh, I've used some wire ties to make them nice and neat. And so kind of here's the finished product. Uh, what's left to do is I still need to wire up my transmitters to this uh, terminal block. And I also need to, here, supply the mark hold, uh, attach the mark hold supply. Now, I have not built the mark hold supply yet, but I can probably try uh, this all out by using a bench supply in uh, current, uh, current constant current mode, keep it at, you know, 30 milliamps or something like that. And then you'll see here, these two blue go out underneath the end here, uh, attach back here, and as we saw previously, here is the reperforator. Uh, the benefit of this, of course, is I could put something else in there, or I could even just check the current using my, uh, my ammeter. I could check the loop current there. So overall, very nice, uh, very happy how it came out. And if we watch it, uh, I also um, put some uh, little strain relief here, and then also here. Uh, and so that way, as it closes, nothing gets uh, crimped. Uh, you know, everything stays uh, together, and there's plenty of room for it to all open up. So yeah, very pleased how this um, how this all came together. Okay, friends. Well, I think that's enough for this rather lengthy part two. You are not going to want to miss part three. Part three, we're going to do two things. One, we're going to uh, test this all out using a lab uh, bench supply and see how it all works, uh, including getting the transmitter interfaced. And then we're going to build uh, the mark hold supply, a dedicated mark hold supply, and get that integrated. And then uh, this project should be pretty much done. See you next time. Thanks for watching.